formal now. <coughs> I think we'll kick this off this actually, so let's let me have to do And so now you think this man's experienced enough? Probably not. He's going to get the apprentice helmet. That's mine? Yeah, that's yours, yeah. Because until you were actually a fully qualified knight, you would never wear what was called the great helm, the symbol of power and wealth. You had to wear a leather one. Symbolised you were a trainee. There he is. I think you give him a big round of applause. I think I'd last a minute more. Yeah. <laughs> now he's only been wearing this for a very short time, and he'll probably tell you that it's starting to get a bit heavy. Yeah? It's starting to get a bit heavy, yeah. Now, <laughs> I don't even know his mind, he's a professional. He's good. <laughs> so he comes off the battlefield, and normally this is where the squire would have rushed forward to help him, but you're so useless I'm going to do this myself. <laughs> so what happens is the squire comes and takes off the equipment, and I would have a helmet, helmet, and the camera cap. Now, Better, right? Yeah, I feel good. Now you can take that off, guys. Yeah. Now the hardest thing to get off was the vest of mail, because there's only two ways of doing it. A couple of squires would come along and lift the chain mail, you bend your knees and slip out, or they just pulled it over your head, which is the much more fun way. So tip your head forward, sir. That's better. Keep a hold of these clothes so don't come off. Whoa! <laughs> Give them a big round of applause, please, folks. We're going to make a nice show. Family show. So the only way you could actually get used to this was to wear it constantly for so many hours every day to get used to the weight going into battle. And we eventually wore these things to protect you, but one weapon would get through all your defence, and that was this. It's called the long bow or the war bow, made from ash or yew. The bowstring used to be made out of part of an animal. They actually made it out of sheep's intestines. You would dry it out and stretch it and use it for a bowstring. The archer called it cat gut, but that's the nickname they had for it. But it was sheep's guts, so it was equally nasty. Now it's a 40 pound bow. What I mean, it's not 40 pound in weight, it's uh, 40 pound weight, not 40 pound in money, I should say. So it's like trying to pull and lift 40 pounds. But the bow was only half the weapons. The other thing was the arrows. Now, I'm going to show you, I've got them all. A couple of typical arrows, goose feathers on the end. This is a hunting arrow. So you see the shape of the arrow here. But the other arrows you would use, two specialist ones. One was called a bodkin. Very thin. If you haven't worked out why it is so thin, it's been designed for this stuff. The archer sees the knight coming towards him and he fires this at him and it passes through the links of the chainmail vest. So even if you're wearing chainmail, it doesn't protect you against a good archer. But there's one other arrow feared more than any other. <laughs> it's called a swallow tail. Right. Oh no, don't get this one. It's a bit sharp, this one. <laughs> now, people often ask when you were hit by weapons such as this, how on earth did you get it out? But there was a way of doing it, but I always like to ask if anybody's got any ideas. Push it, it gets, all the way through. Push it all the way through, sir. Now I have to tell you, that's a movie thing. Because if you were actually lying on the battlefield, you've got an arrow sticking it, and your mate comes up and goes, I know what to do, I'm going to smack that right through. And he goes, what? You go, oh, there's my kidney. Yeah. No, there's another way. Any other guesses? Break it off and pull it out. What was, that? what was that? Break it off and pull it out. Break it out and pull it off? But you still got that bit sticking in there. Yeah. Well, often what would happen is the soldiers carried things with them. One of the things they carried was then called a probe, like a big pencil. And if they found a friend hit by an arrow, all they could see was the end of the arrow. So they probed the wound, and once it worked out, it was one of these that were in there. They would take out of their bag, Two of these. Now, these are goose feathers. Here comes the science bit. The man would say to you, I'm sorry, my friend, to get that arrow out of you, I've got to push these into the hole where the arrow goes in. Sounds pretty brutal, but this is what he does. He pushes them into the hole until he covers up the end like so. If you remember, this is all still sticking inside the man, but you can now pull it back out the way it went in, and it won't catch on his skin. So that's how you get them out, by putting goose feathers in the end and pulling it out. Very clever. Well, there's one way I'd like to show you. See it into the end. It's my favourite. It's this one. This is the famous two-handed sword used to great effect to cut through a vest of chainmail. The thing about a sword like this, when you went into battle, you could not carry a shield. So the top part of the sword was very sharp, but the lower part was blunt. It was blunt because on the battlefield, if someone tried to hit you with a sword like this, you could grab a hold of the blunt part of your sword and use it like a stick to block the blow. And if your enemy's sword fell here, you could use the cross piece to knock the sword to the side and use the metal bubble to smack him on the nose. 
He then falls back upon the ground, you whack him with the sword, and all the oozing bits come out. <laughs> the question we're often asked is how did they carry such a weapon around? As you can imagine, you can't put it into a sword belt, for it would drag on the ground when you walk. And you couldn't simply pop it onto your shoulder like this. When you're walking down a busy high street and someone would talk to you from behind that. You've been ready to see who it is, and you've chopped some a passerby's head off. And wrecked the place as well. So what you had was a thing called a baldric. Baldric was a large piece of leather that slipped over the blade with a rope that went from the top to the bottom. You could put the sword into the baldric and loop it onto your back like so. If you were ever attacked, you'd take it off your back, remove it from the scabbard and use it for the fighting. Now that's how most people used to do this. There was another gentleman who did it slightly differently and his name was Mel Gibson. <laughs> Some years ago Mel Gibson did a film called Brave Heart, which you may have seen. Unfortunately Mr Gibson got quite a few things wrong in the film. <clears throat> He did do something quite remarkable, however, and if you ever see the film again on television, it's worth looking out for it. During one of his battle scenes, you see Mel Gibson with a claymore on his back. Halfway through the scene, he draws the claymore out of the baldric like that. I have to tell you, it's physically impossible. Your arms would have to be five feet long to get the sword out. And that does rule Mr Gibson out, but he's only that tall. <laughs> so this, then, was the great weapon, the two-handed sword. But there was perhaps one other thing I haven't mentioned. A weapon that was given to young soldiers who had no experience, and it was a crossbow. Now, don't have a proper crossbow, but we do have this one here. And basically the crossbow had a big metal loop in it to stick your foot. You would then pull the crossbow thing up here and hook it onto this wooden trigger. When you would squeeze the trigger, the bolt would drop down and the crossbow would fire. It was said you could hand this to anyone and they could learn how to use it in a few moments. Uh, what's your name? Oh no, don't tell me. Your name's Gaff. <laughs> What's your name? Annabelle. Annabelle, I'm going to finish off the show by letting you shoot someone with a crossbow. <laughs> ah, I'm going to shoot my squire. <laughs> so, squire, you can get your shield for protection. Right. 